If we don't know our history, we're condemned to repeat it. Okay, you in the frame at least, so this is the square where we're going to be recording. Good afternoon everyone here, this is Conrad again for the Hashtag South Africa show. I was on my break quickly for half an hour but get a call that we had someone urgent to meet and I re didn't realize the urgency of it until I got here. But equipment set up and so I'd like to introduce to you, before I introduce to you, let me give you a bit of a short history lesson of South Africa. We have great places like Vilakazi Street, we have Ravonia Gate, we have various moments of iconic places of based on geographical location. But what this really does is connect our history to our present. I'm going to introduce you to a gentleman that's going to be talking to you about a place here in South Africa and a memorial and a monument. Just like they have the Nelson Mandela Legacy Foundations and so forth. There's so much of great messages of South Africans to share and uh, this is us planting that journey. So you'll be looking and seeing a lot of different content coming up about the specific individual and their project with separate video dialogues and engagements and, and links for you to find where they are. Don't worry about that. But now let's just start with that first story. Welcome. Thank you very How much, you? Comrade. So, you maybe come a bit close. Come a bit close. Great. So talk to us. Let's let's go for it. You know the floor is yours. I like for you to explain. Like, firstly, where are you guys right now in Johannesburg? Okay. Firstly, let me introduce myself. My there name is Nicholas Wolpe. Yeah. I am the um, CEO and founder of Lily's Leaf Trust. And Lily's Leaf Trust has restored Lily's Leaf Farm. Now, Lily's Leaf Farm is situated in Ravonia. Back in 1961, Lily's Leaf was a peri-urban area and the Communist Party, through a front company called Navian Pty Limited, purchased Lily's Leaf in August of 61 as a meeting place for the Communist Party, um, or I should say a meeting place for the Politburo and the Central Committee. And in order to understand why, one must put it in the context of what was unfolding at the time. Following Sharpeville in 1960, the ANC, PAC and other political formations had been banned. And it would become increasingly difficult for the Communist Party, who had been underground since 1950, because it had been banned in 1950, were found it increasingly difficult to meet in some of the locations that they had previously used. Because with the ANC going underground, these premises were now being used as safe refuge for those who were operating underground. And Lily's Leaf was purchased, as I indicated, in August of 1961, as a meeting place for the Politburo and the Central Committee. But it also was purchased at a very strategic or shall I say turning point moment of reckoning of the struggle it was following Sharpeville the events of Sharpeville were what propelled the ANC to move away solely from passive resistance to a combination of passive resistance and armed struggle and Lily's Leaf was purchased at a time of this move away so not only did Lily's Leaf become the headquarters of the uh, Politburo and Central Committee, it also became the high command of the newly formed military wing of the ANC, Unkuntua Seasway. And Nelson Mandela was its first occupant, and he moved into Lily's Leaf in October of 61 under the alias of David Motsamaya, the gardener in the blue overalls, who was taking care of the property until his white master moved on. But what is important about Lily's Leaf is that it became what I like to call the inverted diaspora of the liberation movement and the liberation struggle. It became the nerve center of the struggle. It was from there that the ideas of the Freedom Charter, the very core and very essence of what our liberation struggle was predicated on, became alive. It became the place where they debated, discussed and planned the overthrow. It was also where they planned and launched the first military attacks that took place on December 16th, 1961. So Lily's Leaf became the hub of the struggle. It became the essence of the struggle. And today, if you want to understand what the struggle was about, you must start at Lily's Leaf. Lily's Leaf really is 
the cog which gives an explanation, the context to so many numerous events. What do I mean by that? If you want to understand, as I mentioned, the meaning of the Freedom Charter at Cliptown, you must visit Lilisti because the Freedom Charter came alive. If you want to understand the consequences of Sharpville, the massacre that took place in March of 1960, you must come to Lily's Leaf because Lily's Leaf, as I've already alluded to, became the high command of the newly formed military wing. In fact, at the Stellenbosch conference in 2002, the ANC declared that the birthplace of MK was Lily's Leaf. So, as Lily's Leaf was a hive of activity. And the raid on the 11th of July 1963, which in itself was fundamental and significant in that it led to the arrest of so many leaders of the liberation movement and the ultimate internal decimation and destruction of the internal lib of the organization, as people describe a hammer blow, it also led to the Rivonia trial. And the evidence that was uncovered at Lily's Leaf was presented at the trial. In fact, the name of the trial got its name from the fact that Lily's Leaf was in the peri-urban area of Rivonia. It also enabled the apartheid government to bring Nelson Mandela, who had already been arrested and was serving a five-year sentence, as co-accused number one, because his papers and documents were found at Lily's Leaf. So as you can see, Lily's Leaf played a central an important role in our struggle. It was the articulation of what our struggle was about. And today, Lily's Leaf stands as a symbol of what that struggle meant, what it articulated, what we were struggling for to bring about a non-racial, non-sexist, free, democratic South Africa. Interestingly, within that context, Lily's Leaf was an incubator of the new South Africa. What do I mean by that? If we listen to the words of Martin Luther King, if I may quote, I should say, the words of Martin Luther King from his I Have a Dream speech, he says at one point, I have a dream that one day, my, I have a dream that hopefully one day, my four children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And that is what Lily's Leaf epitomized and articulated. Lily's Leaf judged each other not on the color of their skin but on the content of their character. And there is a story of a ten-year-old snitch who one day was playing there with the Goldreich children. Arthur Goldreich and his wife Hazel fronted as the white owners. They created that white facade and their two children were playing with a young boy by the name of George Mellis and he noticed one day while on the property white men and black men shaking hands. And to him, that was unusual. But in a modern day society, where race did not define how one interacted, it wouldn't be seen as unusual for people to interact on that basis. That is why Lily's Leaf was an incubator, because it judged each other by the content of their character. And Lily's Leaf then personified what the dream of a new South Africa would look like. And as I said, today, Lily's Leaf upholds those very fundamental traditions. It has exhibits, dynamic interactive exhibits which you can interact with, you can walk around. We have an archive of historical material. We're the custodians of the Communist Party Library. We have ourselves interviewed over 200 people and have interview footage of over 350 hours plus other interview footage that we've given, which gives us interview footage of over 700 hours. So, <laughs> High five on that one. Well done, that's a lot of content. Story. Thank you. So Lily's Leaf today tells the story of what the struggle was about. And it is should be resonating with all South Africans because it is about create a non-racial, free, democratic South Africa for all South Africans. And I suppose, why am I saying this? Because I would like to appeal to the South African business community to come and help and assist us in our endeavors. Because we survive on donor funding, project funding also for projects that be 
that tell the story, that capture the memories and testimony of a very unique, significant period in our struggle needs to be preserved and protected because we cannot allow ourselves to fall back to the old dark days of apartheid. Because as Edwin Burke once said, if we don't know our history, we're condemned to repeat it. And as George Santana said, if we forget about our history, we, are, we may repeat it. And we mustn't repeat it. We want to create a society predicated on our freedom chart and on the great stalwarts of our struggle like Walter Sisulu, Gavin and Becky, Raymond Mishlaba, Andrew Malangeni, Duma Nokwe, Wilton McQuay, Moses Katana, and the list is endless. These are individuals that frequented Lily's Leaf. So Lily's Leaf personifies the very essence of our struggle. Thank you.